Don't leave all the butt stuff in. All right, man. Have you ever heard of uh, Antoine Joseph Adolf Sachs? Are you done? I don't know. It That's seemed his like, name. It That's seemed like name. you had more. Antoine Joseph Adolf Sachs. Yeah, he goes, goes by, by Aaron. Adolf. Oh, no. And Associates. Aaron Sachs and Associates. <laughs> What I'm is- Aaron Saxon Associates. This is Travis Kelsey. He's in my commercials for some reason, <laughs> and uh, I'm a lawyer. He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer in Springfield. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. uh, no, not him. Uh, different Adolf. He he was born in 1814, okay. so a long time ago before his name became out of 98 vogue. years before the Titanic. 98 years. Uh, he's an, a significant person uh, because. Um, well, well, let's just tell the story. I can't think of a better word for the saxophone than just sexy. And everyone's like, what is that? I've never I'm heard so anything like this. that in my life. Every wedding, I sneak off and try to find my way to the roof. Uh, and I really liked it. It was kind of like poetic. It was the dumbest thing I ever heard. <laughs> Things I learned last night. Uh, so Adolf Sachs was born in 1814 in a town called Danan, Belgium, uh, and this town was a French speaking uh, Belgian town uh, and to a father who was a music manufacturer, like a <laughs> instrument <laughs> manufacturer. <laughs> Why do you say? Okay. <laughs> I couldn't remember a the word music? instrument for a you second. You couldn't ignore the, the word music either. A <laughs> music, music manufacturer. Well, I was trying to make it musical, you know. It's got that word he has to beats. flow. Yeah, <laughs> he's a beat builder, um, and so uh, grew up in this home with a dad making musical instruments, mostly woodwinds, but a little bit of stringed instruments. Okay, was his dad's his dad's job, and his parents were what uh, the modern uh, public would call neglectful. Um, but what the people in that time would call um, good parents, absolutely normal parents. It's the kid who's kick him out of the nest. Yeah, the kid's the problem. Uh, What's he nine? Send him on the road with a stranger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe he'll find a swamp or something. Maybe he'll find another family. <laughs> uh, it's so like he, the beginning of Shrek. Have you seen the like the Shrek the musical? No, I haven't seen it. Have you though? I haven't actually watched Shrek the musical. No, I've seen Shrek. Okay. Obviously, does I don't remember. Does, sh- does the movie Shrek start like this, where he, like his parents are like, "It's time for you to get out of here." I want to be honest. The only part of Shrek I remember is All Star by Smash Mouth. Oh, <laughs> that's the only part well, I remember. <laughs> okay, so it opens on a swamp. <laughs> uh, no, in Shrek the Musical, which is very much worth your time. Did uh, that come first? No. <laughs> Uh, the opening number is, you know, it's his birthday and his parents are like, um, now you're older and now it's time to go away. All right. And it's like, <laughs> the, like they're teaching him that the world's going to hate him and pitchforks and all this stuff. And they're yeah. just like, all right, Get go on here. son. Interesting. And it's just this little kid walking this, little, like this little ogre kid. I'm going to learn that and I'm going to hire like the cast of the original. Shrek when you musical, have, when it's time to get rid of your kid, kid, it turns eighteen. They're gonna be, they're gonna be a lot older. Party. So I mean, like the cast, like there's some people who are like in their forties. I'm, they're gonna be like you know, seventy <laughs> by the time that happens. Be even better, and uh, they can barely get the words out. Yeah, they're like, no, it's high. <laughs> it go I, I, yeah, he, he paid, paid our travel, so that's why we're thing. here. <laughs> what <laughs> you you paid their travel? Like oh, you you yeah, hired. Yeah, yeah. You're saying that you're gonna. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I understand your dreams because you're assuming that by the time your kid is 18, you will have enough income to yes. hire the original Broadway cast mm-hmm. of Shrek the musical. Yeah, I'm manifesting it. <laughs> <laughs> you sit. So you sit down with your financial plan. <laughs> this is the goal. I don't know. Like, what's your like? Uh, what's your like 20 year plan? Oh, I'm glad you asked in 20 years. I'd like to hire the original cast of Shrek the musical <laughs> for what are you my financial planner or a guy who asks a lot of questions. Okay, <laughs> that that that's for my party planner and my party planner alone to know. Yeah, I expect confidentiality from you and professionalism. I hate the idea that in 20 years you'll have like a party planner. 
yeah. like somebody who's On just a, your regular party planner. <laughs> Being rich must be so dumb, you know? Oh, I'll call my party guy. <laughs> I got a party guy. Whatever. So yeah, Adolf, his party parents guy. go now. It's time to go away. No, they didn't. Uh, he's he's uh, not even two years old yet. Um, and here's the deal. Uh, in in that day, everybody was like, "Oh, your kid's cursed." Let me tell you everything that happened to him, and you'll be like, "Oh, you're bad parents." Uh, so here's the first. Your kid's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, he's not even two years old yet. Um, like just learning to walk, he falls out a third story window. Uh, goes into a coma, but wakes up eventually, survives, um, goes on with his life. A couple years later, he's three years old. He's in his dad's workshop, um, and he. Was his dad Santa? <laughs> no, he makes instruments. Remember? Oh yeah, his music <laughs> shop. His That's music right. Music shop. Yeah, um, and his dad had left some sulfuric acid out, <laughs> and he, the kid, three years old, thought it was milk, and so he drank it. Um, so had. Pretty severe sulfuric acid the curse. poisoning. <laughs> the curse got him. Um, survived that. A couple years later, uh, he swallowed a needle uh, and managed to pass it. Uh, totally fine, uh, which is pretty insane. Uh, <laughs> you know, Chris Angel did that in his show. <laughs> That's where this is where he got it. This is his inspiration. <laughs> it was the grossest part of the show. Uh, he also uh, burnt himself on a, a hot stove and got an infection from it because that was I guess really common back then. If How you old yourself. was he when, when that was all this happening? I mean, he's a child child. Yeah, like this started at the age of one and it ran through his childhood. Um, yeah, but, he's more than just unlucky. Like he's he's kind of dumb. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he then got hit in the head from a roof tile that fell off of a building that he was standing by and th- have you ever like like the old school like roof tiles like that the plaza has, you know, yeah. those tiles. Yeah. Have you ever held one of those? They're heavy. They're very heavy. Yeah. So it knocked him unconscious uh, and he went into a coma again. Uh, was in a coma for a little while, but survived that woke back up went about his life. Um, uh, how was his cognitive ability at this point? Do you know uh, like uh, uh, if he's fallen out of the here's what here's what we know from his later life. Um, his cognitive ability was probably pretty fine, but I think whatever his like don't be a person who sucks like receptors in his brain sure. got disconnected because he was kind of a tool the rest of his life. Um, so uh, I, I guess some cognitive damage, but yeah. like he was still you relate. <laughs> I don't remember any of this stuff happening to me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you talked to your doctor about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also he drank varnish three different times. Three um, different times. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. This sounds like a guy who knows how much gasoline you can drink. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, you he, he would. I mean, he's yeah. Uh, he also drank arsenic. Okay. Uh, and then uh, on one fateful day, he a townsperson. Uh, in his town, found him miles from his house, floating face down in the river, just getting carried by the current. So he dragged him out, and uh, the uh, Adolf laid there for a couple moments, and then just kind of coughed up all the water, and then got up and went about his day. <laughs> and his mom said, "Was like thanks." His mom. His mom. Which way to my home? <laughs> Which way home? <laughs> Uh, his mom said about him that uh, uh, the boy is cursed. He's uh, going to live a, a life of long suffering. The town called him the ghost, uh, which is super cool. Um, Sick nickname, dude. Yeah, because he never died. He he was. I mean, he, I don't know what it was. So you time. think that did that develop like a, I'm an invincible kind of feeling? I is think that what? So. Is that I what think it is? He was kind of cocky. Okay. Um, and so in high school, in high school, he got really into music, um, and he he like, um became I don't know what the word is for it. At, at this time being a band nerd was cool. cool. It was kind of like playing guitar. It's pretty hot. Yeah, it was yeah. like oh, you yeah. play clarinet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're in clarinet club Woodwinds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so he was kind of like, you know, a rock star sort of sort of um, yeah, and so he's living that life learning learning music and uh, his dad. He's apprenticing under his father who's a music Guy. A music a manufacturer, music. <laughs> a beatboxer, a beat, sure. a beat manufacturer. Um, 
And so they he, call him Arby's because he's got the beats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hate that so much. That's pretty good. It's my SoundCloud name. <laughs> my SoundCloud name is Roast Beef. <laughs> um, you know I have roast beef at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> but the E's are threes, so it's roast B three three F. Which is also the password. <laughs> So now you have it too. <laughs> Capital R zero <laughs> at symbol. Yep, yep, yep. As you tricky. get it, people will never guess it. People They'll will never. I <laughs> have roast beef at gmail.com and no one knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Uh, <laughs> so this guy, he uh, <laughs> he starts like kind of hobby making instruments. Okay, uh, just kind of like you know, like this guy invent the French horn because I did because <laughs> I did that first. <laughs> I beat him to that <laughs> close. Um, he he made uh, a bunch of instruments kind of like when you were a kid and you made instruments out of like tissue boxes and stuff, um, but he was making real instruments, so not a lot like that <laughs> actually now that I say that out loud. Okay, um, and so he's building he's building all these instruments and in his late teens, he enters into a Belgian ex, ex, exhibition, a Belgian musician exhibition. Okay. <laughs> the Belgian musician exhibition. Here's your mission. <laughs> I got stuck paid on it. in commission. I, I, I couldn't stop with those. Okay, so um, he enters into this thing with a new instrument that he had invented uh, called the bass clarinet. Here's the thing. He didn't invent it. The bass clarinet existed, but <laughs> it was not good. Um, everybody agreed that the bass clarinet sucked um, okay. because it it wouldn't stay in tune. It was very quiet um, and it was like hard to play uh, and it just didn't sound good in general. Uh, sure. And so the bass clarinet was like a not popular instrument. He made this bass clarinet that like curved upwards so like it was louder and then it could hold it tune and it actually sounded good. And so he built this bass clarinet. Is it he, the, I understand where we're going. I think you do know where we're going. Okay. Uh, and so he makes this bass clarinet and at the exhibition, everybody's minds are freaking like, dude, blown. that's so sexy. <laughs> they, they, he's like, what'd you say? What did you just say? About that's that? that was the slang back there. Yeah, that's that. so sexy. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. Um, and everybody was like, wow, this sounds great. This is really good. We love it. Uh, and then they pull him aside at the end of the exhibition, and they said, "Hey, hey! By the way, the bass clarinet already exists, you idiot. <laughs> just so you know. Hey, we just wanted to let you know on a little secret. You're a moron. <laughs> yeah, just what did you get dropped from a third story window as a child? <laughs> he goes, well, I it was actually dropped. Uh, yeah, I walked. I, the, I jumped. <laughs> I did that myself. That was nobody else's fault. They told him. They said. They said, here's the deal, bro. This idea." Great idea. We love it. We love you. You're great. Sounds great. Looks great. Feels great. Everything about this is great. Okay. This deserves the gold medal. And he's like, sweet. And they said, but we're not gonna, gonna give, give it, it to you because the other guy paid more. <laughs> well, they said because you're too young. And if you win the gold now, then what are you gonna do the rest of your life? No we way. Be able to see like, what, what are you gonna you work can, toward? Yeah, yeah. Shut like, we up. See what else you could accomplish if you don't win the gold. So we're gonna give you the silver. And uh, just to keep you hungry. <laughs> yeah. And he told them, he told them, he said, he said, if I'm too young for the gold, then I'm too old for the silver. And he refused to accept it. <laughs> and I and he took his <laughs> saxophone and went home. Well, it was a bass clarinet. Yeah, but he, he invented the <laughs> saxophone, right? It's a bass clarinet. At that point, this is a bass clarinet. Okay. This is not a saxophone. Um, <laughs> Is that why the saxophone is gold plated? You actually might be onto something there, actually. <laughs> Where he's like, it's a woodwind instrument, but it's gold. But it's gold. <laughs> I'm not old enough for it. <laughs> You're oh, too young. Sorry. I'm too young for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Don't touch my sax. You're too young. <laughs> So 
So he uh, it's a bass clarinet. <laughs> it's a bass clarinet. Okay. So he very frustrated about this whole situation says, um, well, I don't want to do it then I quit. Yeah, he says he says I can't be around all these stupid Belgians uh, any longer. You people you don't know music. You don't know waffles. What am I here for? And so he says I'm moving to Paris. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so he packs up with forty two dollars. Um, Belgian dollars, Belgian eighteen hundred dollars. I don't nice. know what that is. Hey, when does this episode come out? Uh, October twenty fourth. Oh, dang it! Why? Oh, I was just trying to promote some shows, but they've already happened. Mm, bummer. Yeah. Uh, so, so he moves to Paris with forty two bucks. Could we put it out earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and promote it. October 15th. <laughs> I'm in Franklin, Tennessee with Shama Marima. October 22nd. I'm in Denver, Colorado. Are you going to give a call to action or invite them? Or oh, like, yeah. You, you can. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> can wish you were there. <laughs> can live in your regret. All right. Yeah, you missed it. Loser. Uh, so he moves to Paris and he says, he says, that's right. where it was. <laughs> Paris was on October 22nd. Oh, there you go. Um, he moves, he moves to Paris and he says, this is where I'll have my big break. And yeah. he says, I don't need to try to please these people at these competitions. Sure. Get people excited about this. He says, you know who I need to win over the army. Uh, <laughs> Okay. And he says, he says, I'm going to the French army. Yeah. He said the French. Oh, he did make the French horn. He said the French are going to see the stuff oh, that you I see made. That? I skipped ahead. Oh no. <laughs> he said the French are going to see. He, he didn't make this the French horn. Uh, <laughs> I think that had been around way long. Yeah, it him. looks old. It looks very old. That's that's an idea. That's an old old idea. That's an idea that people had back before our brains were. That's developed. such an old idea, dude. <laughs> that's such a that idea. He couldn't have created the French horn. He's too young. <laughs> that idea is bronze age, bro. Yeah, <laughs> that is. is one bronze age idea. Uh, so he uh, he says, "I'm gonna I'm gonna convince the army. If the army loves my my music, then the world will love my music." <laughs> okay, <laughs> which is because they'll have to. Because the <laughs> army is like, "Hey, hey, what's your favorite band? You're gonna like this. <laughs> if it's not Nickelback, we kill you." I like it, Tech Nine. <laughs> Okay. All right. We'll let that pass. You know why? <laughs> why? Because I'm an army guy. A R M Y guy. Guy. Army. Army. Army guy. That's a callback. So dumb. So he's in Paris and he's trying to get into making instruments. Okay. And uh, he he's showcasing the space clarinet um, at events and stuff, and people in Paris don't like him immediately. They like he comes oh, I thought in. I said space clarinet for a second. Sorry, it's bass clarinet. There's space. Speaking clarinet. of space, remember how we're watching Big Brother right now? Yeah, you remember how Cameron's trying to float that nickname Space Cowboy? He's really trying to get it to stick. I love it. Shut up. <laughs> Stop. He's like, I'm the space cowboy. No, you're yeah, not, dude. It's pretty great. You're Cam. You're Cam. Which, if you think about it, some of the stuff he's done, pretty space cowboy. I'm gonna go into Big Brother. Cause I'm gonna get on. Yeah. Especially now that we're we're gonna live out there. Yeah. And I'm gonna say, I'm the ghost. I'm the ghost. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> sick. Pretty cool. That's pretty sick. And then you have to be the scariest person in the house. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You need to convince production to like Build a fake wall that's like fabric that so I you can, can sleep like, behind. That you can phase through. <laughs> and people can just see you from across the house. Just <laughs> hello, guys. We are needed in the backyard. The ghost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's wrong the with ghost this of season twenty six? <laughs> we need to. We need to vote this guy out of the house, man. Yeah, He's you freaking out me out immediately. <laughs> guy um, I cast out of my me. vote to evict the <laughs> ghost. <laughs> Hi, Julie. You look wonderful tonight. I cast my vote to <laughs> the, the ghost. ghost. <laughs> it's official <laughs> with 15 <laughs> votes. <laughs> the ghost zero. will leave the house tonight. 
she she comes in over the speaker and she's like house ghosts. <laughs> 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 they all boo me as I leave. Boo. boo. And You're I go, like, yeah, boo. Boo. you guys get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> this is the dumbest bit. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. If you like this, we've got a lot of great ones. Let me recommend a recent one, Hitchbot. Uh, basically, some Canadian scientists said, what if we made a robot that hitchhiked across the country? You think it could make it? Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, it's a fun episode. I like it a lot. Uh, you need to check it out. One of my favorite recent jokes is in there. Uh, so check that one out. But if not, thanks for being here. So space, he, space cowboy got me off though. Okay, so he's he's, he's testing out his base clarinet. He's trying he's to be going, like, hey, he's going to door these, to door. No, well, he's going <laughs> to these events and he's playing it, and people are like, that's pretty cool. But honestly, you're not from around here, and you're also kind of a tool, and you're really young, and you've got a lot of scars on your face. And yeah, it freaks us out. Um, and so he pretty much immediately and your name's too long. By <laughs> just choose one, dude. <laughs> uh, the. Anthony Amesis I uh, Adolf. It Close. just sounds like his parents looked at the name book and they were like, the first seven will do. <laughs> Pick as many of them as you want. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah, what they ended up having eleven kids. They used three names on him. I'm curious at what point they like slowed down and were like, just one. Just one fine. Yeah. They didn't even name the eleven. <laughs> yeah. He has no name. That's <laughs> Hey, what's your name? Ghost Kid. Oh, <laughs> uh, my name is Hot boy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of callbacks. Today. My name is the eleventh. Uh, so, which is also cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty sick. <laughs> the the Paris uh, beat builder community said, "Hey, we don't like you." Pretty quickly, because he had really good ideas and they were jealous. I think. Yeah. And he was also a tool. And he was also really young, and he came in, and he was like, "He's like, hey, I got better ideas than all of you." And they were like, "We've been doing this for forty years." And, and they're like, he's "You see like, how it curves at the bottom? You should call this the croissant clarinet." <laughs> and he was like, "That's a stupid idea." The clarissant. Oui, oui, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, you should. Um, <laughs> uh, oui, oui, okay. We should. Um, Call it the, the croissant, you know. <laughs> There's a specific person in our life who I'm. Yeah, I know. I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, <laughs> okay. So he. Uh, uh, it's his wife. He's. <laughs> he's probably this thing, and he's getting. This a lot, is bad. A lot I'm of sorry. I am. He's getting, he's I am getting, making this bad. This is my fault getting, today, dude. He's getting so much hate for this okay. bass clarinet and all of his inventions. He's got a few. Um, for example, while we're here, uh, he invented this. Uh, this is called the trumpet. Uh, this this is a Whoville instrument. Looks like one of the art installations at the Kansas City Airport. It does. It is absolute. There's. Uh, if you're wondering, it's, yeah, dude, Dr. Seuss drew this. <laughs> it looks like a Dr. Seuss trumpet. It, it looks like a trombone. If there was 13 of them that got tangled up in a really bad car accident, it was like a trumpet. If that happened, well, I mean, it's long. Like a trumpet. I mean. How does a person hold it? Where's the? I think if you, yeah, I think the mouthpiece comes you, out. See on oh, this one in the back. Yeah, it comes out in the so back. So you do hold it like a trumpet. Yeah. And then like I guess around. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. I mean, this has got to be heavy. And it's so, also. I, I mean, it's probably like, pretty like, loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, just a little yeah, but you got a second. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> gotta learn how to make money. Off Looks this. fake. <laughs> Uh, What's the point of that? Does it sound like so? Here's the thing that he harmonized. Here's the thing he focused on a lot was that's like oh, go back to that. This is and hear me out here. This is brass pipes. Yeah, like bagpipes. Oh, but brass. I like. I like where you're brass going with pipes because I'm saying like the you know how it harmonizes with itself. Yeah. You might be right, actually. It might harmonize with itself. Yeah, because he's got. I mean, it's got two. You know. Here's another. He did a six-piston trombone. <laughs> um. So yeah, but here's the thing. He, one of his main focuses, because this was before amplification, and so a lot of instruments is instruments instruments were pretty quiet. 
at the time, and especially a lot of wind instruments because I mean there was trumpets that you pointed. Yeah, this flutes way, haven't changed at lot, all. They're just a lot pointed straight down. Yeah, and the sound went straight down, and so he was re-engineering stuff so it went straight at the crowd, and so he was changing the shape of a lot of these things to still get the same sound, but the sound waves travel a little bit better, so it like amplifies. Okay, and he made the cones on the outside of them a lot bigger, um, so they'd be louder was kind of the thing that he was known for doing. Yeah, Uh, they had chocolate. He had chocolate dip cones (laughs) and little sprinkles on them. (laughs) I'll do the dumb parts. This is my sprinkle. You do the info. Let me do the stupid stuff. Sweet. Welcome to info wars. They're trying to put sprinkles on our trumpets. They're trying to put too many trombones together. Look at how many trombones they stuck together. It's not natural. This is an absurd amount of trombones. This isn't what God wanted. (laughs) God wants one trombone and one hand. (laughs) Not even 13 trombones. Put your hands all over them. It's too many. Too many hands. Too many bones. So he made some enemies. And yeah. A lot of people were out to get him. And then he had this revolutionary idea. Okay. He said, What if I'm playing my guitar and there was a thing I could step on that would like repeat whatever I just played? I don't know, like loop it. And then I, I could let that go. And then I started slapping my guitar, like a beat on my guitar. He's making this up. And then I could maybe yell into it. Tim's he's making and this it'd up. be like a song. <laughs> he's stupid right now. No, yeah, he had an idea to put a bunch of stuff together. Um, and so he basically was like, what if we had a woodwind instrument that was also a brass instrument? Um, and so he made the saxophone. And so it mixed two totally different kind of instruments together. No one had thought of that yet. And the music community was like, what the frick is wrong with you? That's and not- he's like, I'm going for gold. <laughs> Uh, the music, the music community took it like people doing loop pedals, because they were like, "That's not, that's not how that works. You're not supposed to use that instrument like that." Okay. Um, or you're not supposed to use those materials that way. You're using it wrong. But everybody else in the world was like, "This sounds awesome. I love this. Put it in step up three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just hadn't heard the SNL intro yet. <laughs> how does that go? You know, oh, sorry, we can't. We're we don't have. Oh, yeah, sorry, to that. we don't have that. Um, yeah, so but that high note that was, was impressive. Pretty good. I'm pretty impressed by that. I could see your face where you're like, I'm ready to make fun of him, and then you let me go because you were like, dang, dang, he hit it. <laughs> you didn't know that I was in an acapella group. All right, I did know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty obvious, brother. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to tell me. All right. Uh, so the the actual music community was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. And, and music fans, but were everybody like, else was like, this is so sweet. Yeah. And so the first time he debuted, it's like it, August Rush. Yes. A no. Kid playing the guitar like this. Yeah. And everyone and, else is like, oh, what the crap? And then Robin Williams is like, you got spunk, kid. <laughs> I'm gonna put you in my shelter with all my other kids. <laughs> that movie's weird when you really think about it. You know what I'm talking about? You see that movie? Like he's just got like all these homeless kids together. No, I don't. Oh, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it was it was Robin Williams real life <laughs> <laughs> played himself in that. He had a, a group of homeless children together. They were all music savants. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. How did he find them? The music brought them together. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the point of the. Yeah, Do you not know? Have you never seen August either. Rush? I it was like a huge it, no. movie in like I don't know, 2005 maybe. Yeah. Well, I wasn't a band kid, so they, it was the kid. Is the kid from Bates Motel and that uh, autistic doctor show? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which is a horrible representation of what autism is. Yeah, uh, it's also true. But uh, yeah, he like plays the guitar like this in the park. He's a homeless kid. Yeah. And then Robin Williams is like, "Hey, I've got other homeless kids, and you guys can be in a band, and I get all your money." That you know, basically, it was like exploiting these children. But anyway, it's a different version of School Rock, kind of. <laughs> yeah, but he like uh, he's like some kind of music savant or whatever, and uh-huh. he writes this symphony, and uh-huh. then he ends up getting the the New York City Symphony to play it in. Wow. In the why can't I think of what the Central Park they uh-huh. play in Central Park. That's and his cool. mom and his dad, who uh, you know, have, have, they're not years. together anymore. Oh, yeah, rise <laughs> from their graves. It was it, it got really weird at the end. Robin, <laughs> no, his mom and his dad hear the symphony, 
and they both show up at the park. Oh, uh, and they rekindled their love. Yeah, and they found their kid. I don't know how. <laughs> That's ours. I guess I should rewatch that movie. <laughs> it doesn't. Well, now that I'm trying to explain, are you know what I'm talking about? A little, but it's been so long. You know the ending scene though, where like the symphony is playing his music, and the parents are like, "This just sounds like they." It's almost like they like they like. I know this song, yeah. you know, and then he's there conducting it and turns around. It's literally he's just, <laughs> and there's his parents, you know. <laughs> And then they kill Robin Williams on stage because <laughs> he's been it, exploiting these kids. It was a wild twist. It's a weird movie, dude. <laughs> and they pan out. The Madagascar, the Madagascar animals are in the park. <laughs> it's a lot of movies just blended together. It's kind of like really when you think about it, it's kind of like they took a brass and a woodwinds and put it together. Put it together, you know. Oh my god! Two pillars of the music industry together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he had this idea for the saxophone. It, it became the saxophone. He wasn't calling it the saxophone at the time. He was calling. Where's the name come? Oh, whatever. We'll figure that out later. Um. He uh, he <sighs> said this is this is good. This is yeah, really. I got good. something here. Yeah, but he's like, but I don't have a patent on this. And he's like, I want to show it off. But he was nervous that the crowd that hated him, the the local Paris musicians, they're gonna steal it. We're gonna steal his idea. So he goes and does a showcase with it, but he stays behind a curtain the whole time, so that way no one can see it. He's like, if they can't see it. <laughs> And so it's like an orchestra. It's so sketchy. Everyone's doing the thing, and there's just and this weird curtain, curtain over here in the middle of the stage. And he's just back there, like, and everyone's like, "What is that? I've never I'm heard so anything like this. that in my life." Is he doing that with the curtain? <laughs> the curtain is the instrument. <laughs> and then he just goes. He just goes. Thank you. Jesus loves you very <laughs> much. <laughs> In today's lesson, <laughs> we still need to get felt puppets of ourselves. But that's a whole. I forgot about that. This showcase that he did yeah. was a very tactical showcase Kay. because he knew the king was going to be there, the oh. king of France. And he said, if he hears this, he said, I know I that's my in with it. the army. Yeah. That's my in with the well, army. See, what's his deal with the army? Okay. Uh, and so, lo and behold, showcase ends. Immediately, the king's like, get me the guy what's behind, behind the curtain. The curtain. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more just <laughs> mystery at that point, you know. I need to see behind the curtain. <laughs> I do. I do think it, that might have played a factor in it. Like, it I mean, have. much like uh, Undercover Billionaire. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, oh, crazy! We got so busy at our barbecue stand, and it's like, yeah, dude, you have a camera crew. Yeah, yeah. It's like crazy that we got the king's attention, and it's like, yeah, you're hiding something from him. Yep, yep. It's just like if I am at a wedding, I sneak off and try to find my way to the roof every wedding. And I found my way to the roof about eight weddings. Is this a real thing? You this do? is a hundred percent a real thing. I've been on the roof at about eight of the weddings I've been to. <laughs> Most weddings uh, have roof access somewhere. Most wedding venues, and so you can get up there. The question is, do they have a padlock on the hatch? A lot of them do. Did but you? But not all of them do. You didn't do that at our wedding. You no, were down the whole. Yours time. was different because it was. Because I was house. with you the whole time. Yeah, I was making I sure. Get away. I, I get was away. like, "You're not getting on this roof. <laughs> you will not make it on this roof." Um, no, yeah, I didn't try it there because it wasn't like a venue. But venues, venues typically will have like a closet somewhere with a ladder to the oh, to the roof. Sure. Um, and so, I, yeah, I've done that at like eight weddings. Um, okay. So it's a sort of thing. It's really like a similar, weird, like just party trick you do. You see, you see, it's not a party trick. I usually just flirt with the bride's mom. <laughs> I do too, but I do it from the roof. <laughs> hey, Martha, look at me. Look, I'm on the roof. Is that cool? Such a stupid. Joke. Hey, so what's your number? <laughs> <laughs> In front, like, during the first day, it's everyone's just down there. Everyone can hear me, dude. I'm such a distraction, man. <laughs> Jeez. We'll debate on leaving that in. Uh, so, <laughs> so the the that's what I'm saying. The the curtain is there, and the king is like, I gotta know what's I gotta behind know, the curtain. I gotta know. And so he talks to him, and he says, he says, Hey, he's like, Have you ever thought about the army? 
And he's like, actually, yes. And he's I'm like, glad you brought it up. <laughs> and he said, I want to be the army beat builder. And he says, you got the job. Sure. Son. And so he fires the guy who's currently doing it. And now he's the guy who's going to make all the music for the army. Uh, and this was still at the time when uh, armies had musicians that would like go out to war with them. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, because um, that's how they would like, didn't identify what like yeah, that's how they gave signals and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, he really genuinely believed that the saxophone was going to be like the turning point in war combat. Yeah. yeah, that that was going to inspire the troops to this is my new war machine. <laughs> Here's Imagine the, that. Here's though, the thing you for know? me, because because exactly, it, I don't know of a better word for a saxophone. Because you got it. There's the what are those called? Dang it, the reed. Yeah. Why did you know that and I didn't for a second? I don't Whatever. know. I'm a musician. Because you got to like lick it. You know, he's like out <laughs> yeah. there on the front lines, just. Like he's tuning it <laughs> yeah, on the back. Tuning it. Oh, well, you tune it before the battle. You got to be prepared. Oh yeah, I mean, like, yeah. there's not freaking. This <laughs> is cannons. Back yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know. <laughs> That's the thing to me, because like you think of like those wars where they had musicians and it's like the drums and the flutes and it's like it's like yeah that's yeah. kind of that's kind of worry but the saxophone that's kind of worry yeah the, the saxophone and <laughs> I, can, I can't <laughs> I can't think of a better word for the saxophone than just sexy like the sound that it makes and on the battlefield <laughs> I think I wrote. I saw Alex write that down. He's putting that in the Why intro. Why can't I say? No, sexy? you can. You can say it. He's just gonna put it in the intro because okay. he's gonna have you go. I can't think of a better word for the saxophone than sexy. There's just something about that sax. But in the instrument, the instrument, like I just picture the like. It's smooth. What's that? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, what you were just singing sounds like. A game show in true. No, it's the. Yeah. Yeah. It's the price is right. No. <laughs> <laughs> Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah, that one. And I just picture like that on a battlefield. Yeah. Where it's just like, like <laughs> behind it. See, isn't that scary? I mean, it is, but also with the sound of like explosions and death and war happening all around you, with an instrument that's like pretty provocative. <laughs> like, just imagine hearing that like lick the the over some dude who's just like. Like it just, I don't think it fits the, I think it's like read the room, man. So, so anyway, <laughs> the rest of <laughs> the rest of the music community. Yeah, uh, is furious. furious that he's succeeding <clears throat> furious that he's getting there furious that he's got his saxophone on the battlefield because they wanted their phones on the battlefield. I don't know what they were making. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and so they they begin. Uh, thus begins a long feud with the Paris musical world. Okay, um, and he in every f- disagreement he gets in with anybody, he immediately challenges them to a face off, like of a, like a instrument face off. Yeah, a musical face off, and so he, they go back to back. They take ten paces. They turn around and play the best tune they think they can. And then the winner gets shot. <laughs> oh, wait, no, oh, wait, the, the loser gets shot. The loser gets shot. The winner shoots the loser. Yeah, uh, and gets a gold medal. Uh, <laughs> and and so he's like, "Isn't this what you wanted? This is what you wanted." I went for gold. <laughs> <laughs> and so these duels get progressively more and more grandiose. Like it started out just like a one-on-one, like yeah, dueling banjos situation, but eventually it turned into he's like, 
Yeah, and he's got to finally beat the the final boss at the end, which is the devil. <laughs> it's the devil himself. No, a couple years into this, the whole thing spiraling out of control. Um, he gets into a duel with someone, and he says, "He says I can have an an orchestra of eleven people that will beat you in a duel if you have sixteen hundred." And they did it. These people got together a sixteen hundred person orchestra, and uh, he okay. won because that's how to hold on. <laughs> Okay, let's imagine putting together a sixteen hundred member orchestra, and you're going around, Have and it's ever, out of spite. <laughs> like it's like, hey, you guys want to put together a spite orchestra? Here, spite is a cool band name. <laughs> a spite orchestra will be taking place on the town square, sixteen hundred strong versus eleven, 11 saxophones. Eleven weak saxophones. He only got a silver medal. They called him Silver Sacks. <laughs> uh, and he won that duel because I think they couldn't figure out how to 16, practice with sixteen hundred people. Yeah, there's no sixteen hundred person practice room out of Angel. He could they couldn't get get a room yeah. big enough for it. Um, no, I also can you imagine? I, I imagine putting that together. Anybody who's ever been on a worship team and like looked at planning center, bro, I've had like, sixteen hundred people on a worship <laughs> team before. That is rough. It's a crowded stage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he won that duel, and and after that duel, the group got together and they said, "This is not." How big was the group if sixteen hundred people faced off? You know, it was a big group of people that didn't like him. Wow. Um, <clears throat> Imagine so, an entire theater of people is just like we want to destroy you. We want you ruined. We want yeah. everything about you. I hope you die. Absolutely ruined. Hey, it's me again. Thanks for being here for this episode. Uh, if you like what we're doing, it does cost us money to do this. Uh, and so just think about that. You know, that's it. Uh, I'm kidding. No, uh, we have Patreon supporters, and it really helps us to make this show possible. Honestly, we're so grateful for everyone who listens to the show. Uh, but there's uh, there's people who um, want to make more of it happen, and so they financially support the show. And, and you get a lot back for it. You get our private Discord uh, where we chat every day. We're hanging out and just getting to bond and hang out. We also do live Zoom hangouts for our Patreon supporters. You get exclusive merch. Uh, it's a good time. There's a lot, there's a lot in it for you, um, and it, and it's. It's a lot in it for us because we get to know you better. You know, you're not just a, a number in a stat board or whatever, but you know, you're our friends and we appreciate you a lot. So consider doing that. Um, if not, then you can listen to this dumb little ad because that's how we're going to get money from you. <laughs> we're going to leech from you either way. We're going to get paid. We're in this for the cold hard cash, baby. <laughs> Anyway, here's an ad. How do they how do they get it though? I realized I forgot to put a CTA in mind. Oh, damn, you were doing gum it. Yeah, they can text Tillin to six six eight six six. Thanks, Jaren. Uh, and so these people, uh, <laughs> because this uh, this epic loss, and because they hated him so much, and they wanted the army back on their side, um, they wanted their phones at war. Uh, they said we need to put together a coalition, a coalition against Adolf Sachs. Okay. And so they created the Paris uh, uh, musicians group, uh, and the main goal was to ruin Adolf Sachs. Like that was why they existed. They would get together Gosh, in this man, basement. This somewhere. starts to sound like something I want. You know, <laughs> I would love if there was a coalition against Jaren Myers, <laughs> a group that's just. Can we set up like an anti Patreon? Can we like, is there like an option <laughs> of like, hey, for five bucks a month, you can like make my life harder? <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> what is the, what is the perks? Like, what I do you don't get know, for five dude. Bucks a month? Like, for every subscriber, that's how many times I get slapped every morning. Every morning, yeah. Someone comes in and slaps you. And just, I mean, yeah. But for if you give twenty dollars, then someone will drive around in front of you and drop nails out the back door. Yeah, <laughs> or just drive around in front of me, just slow. Just you know, you're a bit like that ruins my just day. Three under, just stuff that really <laughs> kills me. You know, like playing the long game, trying to give me an ulcer. You know, that's pretty good. I like that. It seems like the people who work in my apartment are already on that Patreon game. <laughs> they tell you, they tell your stories that you already told, and they just say them, but like not good. Oh my gosh, dude! They come to me <laughs> when I'm mid-story and they jump the end. I tell good stories. 
Yeah. And then people jump in there. Yeah. Uh, I was telling somebody the other day. I was like, you know, here's we got a text from our neighbors and all yeah. that stuff. And then yeah. someone jumped in. It was like, we're moving to Los Angeles. <laughs> I was getting there. <laughs> I'm working on it. If you would let me work on it. That story made it kind of obvious who jumped in and I don't <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> If you're listening, you know who you are. She's and so not. does everyone else. She's not. Like <laughs> I love her. Uh, so they uh, she tells bad stories. <laughs> their main goal in in their group was to financially ruin him, uh, so that way he couldn't do what he was doing anymore. That's wild. And so they started suing him a bunch, uh, and so they took him to court. Uh, the first lawsuit that they took against him was a lawsuit where they said um, he can't ha- own the patent for the saxophone because the saxophone doesn't exist and the court uh, listened to their argument and Adolf Sax, his defense was to do this. Oh, his last name is Sax. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. That's now. where the name came from. That was my bad. I was dumb earlier. <laughs> I forgot that his last name was Sax. Yeah, you're like you come up with the French horn. I'd like you to go <laughs> uh, edit that part out where earlier I was like, are we going to find out why it's called a saxophone because I <laughs> I just feel like a big old <laughs> dummy right now. Yeah, yeah, you should. And so he was like, "I got one." Yeah, they were like, "They were like, it doesn't exist." And then they, were, the court was like, "What's your defense?" And he went, "He's like, who?" And the court went, oh, "It exists. <laughs> it is real." And so that didn't work. So he won that case. Yeah. And so then they brought another case against him. In this case, they said, um, "They said here's the deal. So the saxophone does exist, okay? But he stole it. This has been around for forever." And the court says, "Well, what's your proof?" And they said, "Look, we have four examples of saxophones that have the logos from manufacturers and dates on them uh, all over the world, long before sax was even born." And what the court uh, was able to find out through some investigative journalism, I guess I don't know. There's some YouTuber who tracked it down. Uh, <laughs> He's these since guys gone missing. These guys just bought four saxophones from Aaron Sax from him, and then not from Aaron Sachs. Sachs. <laughs> from from Adolf Sax <laughs> from Adolf Sax, and then they shipped them off to these manufacturers, and they said, "Hey, we'll pay you really well if you scratch off his logo and you put yours on and put some date like 200 years ago." How many is he selling? I mean, he's like a real business now. Like he's selling these to orchestras. He's selling them to the army. Like he's wow. manufacturing these. Uh, and so that case lost because they were like, hey, you. Where he's like, this th- is mine. like this is fraud. And they were like, what's fraud? Uh, and they're like, we haven't made that law yet. But it, 200 years from now, you go to prison. Uh, that's exactly how that conversation. Yeah. Went. And so that didn't work. So then they just they just kept bringing different lawsuits of like, hey, your patent can't work because of this or whatever. Hey, you can't be this ugly in public. That's the rules. <laughs> That's the rules. Hey, you can't be cursed and make stuff. We were trying to find laws in Westminster, Colorado, because that's where my show is on October twenty second. That you missed, <laughs> listener. Uh, but uh, we were trying to find laws, and one of the laws we couldn't. Try, we were trying to confirm this is that it's illegal to get lost in Westminster, Colorado. Between the hours of 9 p.m. and 10 a.m., it's illegal to be lost. lost. And that sounds pretty. It's because of bears. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. What are you talking about? It's because of bears. Why would it be? Because bears eat people between. And they're saying, like, hey, hey, they're trying to victim blame you. Like, if you yeah. get, if you get if lost. You're out that late, it's your fault. We can't help you. Is that no? Because they travel in packs at late at night. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> I was thinking it sounds pretty sundown towny. Oh, that does actually. Where too. they're like, they pull them over and they yeah. go, "You lost." Yeah, and it's like that's a weird law that, is, that might that is, be in the books. That's worse. That's worse than way bears. worse. Yeah, that's worse than oh, bears. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah. That's a little worse than bears because <laughs> they also travel in packs. <laughs> Pick you up and. There's a bear in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They were, we were trying to look up the wall. Like that was a weird one that was on there. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so he's going through these legal battle after legal battle after legal battle. Sure. And it's just wasting. Like they're just trying yeah, to waste. Yeah, his they're time just trying to kill his resources. Yeah. They're trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then one day he had an idea. He said, "Fine, I'm going to not have a patent. I'm going to make it open source. Uh, it's free use. If you guys can build it." You can build it, and a year later, nobody was able to replicate it. And then, because no one was able to replicate it, he was able to go to the court and be like, "Hey, I'm the only one who can make this." And they're like, "Okay, you got the patent," <laughs> which is 
kind of cool, kind of freaking sick. Like to kind just be of like freaking sick, bro. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> all right, fine, do it. Fine, make it, make it. You want to make it? Make it, make it. Wow, and no one could. Uh, and so they were really upset about. They didn't this. have the divine knowledge given from a roof tile hitting you in the head. <laughs> God told me how to make this when he hit me in the head with that tile. Dude, when I was in that coma, <laughs> I thought of like so many musical instruments. <laughs> Each instrument. Several of them highly unpractical. <laughs> you won't believe what One I thought of, of when I saw that needle. <laughs> it was just going down there and I was like, how do I get this out? How do I get this out? Um, so he uh, <laughs> uh, he got away with the patent and they were really, really upset about this because they said, hey, He's got the patent. Yeah, the court thing isn't working anymore, and so they did the only logical next step. They hired an assassin. Yeah, they tried to kill him for uh, sure. And the problem was he's cursed. The assassin, uh, yeah. Uh, for some reason, the assassin. I don't know if they gave him the wrong mark or the wrong picture. Or Killed the wrong they person. Have, they might have given them this image of him, uh, <laughs> and so that's. I mean, <laughs> that could be anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a picture of what he actually looks like. Um, okay, and so they like they, a cool guy who sits backwards on a chair. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely full of himself. Uh, I I don't know what it was if the assassin gave the wrong mark or if this was intentional, but the as, assassin attempted to assassinate his assistant, not him, uh, and so he technically survived an assassination attempt. Uh, his assistant survived too. Uh, oh, but okay. he fired him. His performance was really bad after that. Yeah, he's like, yeah, you're not the same since you lost that leg. <laughs> yeah, you just haven't been the same after all that trauma. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Every day you come in here, I'm just like, hey, I'm just trying to make saxophones, and you're like, hey, okay, I'm really struggling with, I'm kind of paranoid. I think I'm yeah. being followed, you know. Yeah. And it's like, dude, you survived. Get over, over it already, it. man. Every time they test it, bro, it, people just don't want to work these days, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You get one attempt at your life, and now all of a sudden you're lazy. Oh, you want workers' comp, mm. and you want benefits, and you want me to like be on the lookout. Do you think I was thinking about workers' comp when I was floating face down down the river? You need Ten a couple hours. brushes with death, <laughs> yeah. in order to fully comprehend the power of life. Anyways, give me some gold to put on this. Uh, you so know why. <laughs> uh, so they kind of Paris, the coalition of people who hated this guy. Uh, they kind of backed off a little bit because the assassination attempt felt like nothing they could do could do. <laughs> okay, I'm sticking with that. I said a phrase this morning uh, that I'm going to say a lot from now on. I really liked it. Cool. Um, I was <laughs> go on. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I said a little phrase this morning that I think I'm going to add to my that's cool, man. I'm glad. I'm story. sure I'll hear it another time. <laughs> if you're going to say it a lot, I'm sure I'll pick it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, so he goes, uh, <laughs> say your phrase. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. It's fine. So his career. No, say your <laughs> phrase. What was your phrase? Uh, I was talking about how yesterday uh, was kind of like a rough day, and I was hoping today was going to be a better day. And I said, um, uh, hopefully today is a better trip to the well, uh, and I really liked it. It was kind of like poetic. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm hoping for a better trip to the well. Put that in your today. Sergeant Winslow book. It'll yeah, it will be in that for That's sure. That's how it ends for sure. I hope that tomorrow is a better trip to the well. Yeah, and then he gets shot by a dude with a saxophone. <laughs> so I just want to make sure you're painting the scene. You're the author here. I hope that tomorrow is a better trip to the well. Sergeant Winslow said as the sun fades. And then bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was more like a bang. bang. Oh, okay. Bang, bang. You know, yeah. Bang. Yeah, there you go. Okay. There you go. Yeah, the bang harmonized. With bang, the bang, 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 bang. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, he survived the coalition. Okay, he, he's gone through. Did he sue them for attempting to assassinate him? No, um, he's like he's like he's like, hey, if you can kill me, you can kill me. <laughs> A year later, he's like, they can't kill. They can't. They're kill not gonna kill. Can me. I patent myself? 
Yeah, it can't kill me. Can, can we do that actually? Can we put a patent in through the patent office of ourselves? I don't can know. I patent me? I'm one of a kind. <laughs> I'm one of a kind. Baby. I did think, is it funny? Tell me if this is funny. Yeah, let's hear it. To sell mugs with our Tillin logo on it. Yeah. And instead of the TM, just put the words patent pending. That's very funny. I okay, love that. cool. I, I love that a lot. Sure that. Um, so he ended up being done in. Uh, he lost his big army contract because uh, the French Revolution. Um, oh. So power switched over and uh, they were like, hey, we got a different guy. He who's heard the people sing. Yeah. The new guy was like, we want Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. They're like, it we inspires want us we remember <laughs> so much more. <laughs> you see that new album that they just put out? Yes. They put out like a remix of Beautiful Letdown, but they had a bunch of people cover it. Yeah. And they're big names. John Bellion did, did yeah. Meant to Live. Yeah. Yeah. In that I'm wild. Surprised. You're surprised that John Bellion did that? I'm surprised that they were able to get the names that they got. Bro, they're Switchfoot. I mean, I, I know. I think. But Switchfoot, I, Switchfoot, Switchfoot was big and church and youth group culture, but it was it was one of those. It was one of those where it was huge in youth group culture and they dipped their toe in the everything else. No, but I think I think Switchfoot was one of those bands that was for people who really liked music. Yeah, their stuff is almost like uh, you know uh, what's cold place first album uh, rush of blood to the head or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean revolutionary. Yeah, for that time. Yeah, Switchfoot was also pretty revolutionary for that. That's why it crossed over. Yeah, and so I think a lot of the artists these days grew up. Maybe, maybe it's just it's. I mean, it's a look at the track list. It's pretty impressive the names that they've got that had covered some of that stuff. It it was hard to believe looking through it. Yeah, track fourteen is the cast of <laughs> Shrek the Musical. <laughs> it was gone. Gone. That's my Shrek impersonation. <laughs> Same no, it'd be more like yeah, at the end of the track. It's just silent for 30 seconds at the end of strike the musical like that. So like the song kind of fades out and it's silent. I think and it's over. Hear, what are they doing? <laughs> and then it goes to the next song. <laughs> yeah, so he he loses his career uh, pretty much overnight and he's, oh, and he's already he's yeah. already declared bankruptcy three times because the the legal battles like oh. he's, he's the cost of the legal the law, the cost of the law cost him a lot. Um, You're so annoying today, <laughs> uh, but he was still like trying to invent stuff and Kay. make instruments and things like that. Uh, but then one day He's like, this will bring us peace. <laughs> this will bring us. Well, he won a war. He was he was a part of the war machine. Uh, war oh, made true. him profit, so he was he loved speaking war. of war machines. You see that <laughs> missing plane the other day? Yeah, that's Did you see that Alex. Wild suspect that the government's just like, hey guys, there's an F thirty five we can't find. Yeah. If you could just look up, maybe. <laughs> yeah, let us know if you see. Have you on seen your commute this? home? If you see it, just text. Have you seen this war machine? <laughs> text jet <laughs> to, to six, US Gov. <laughs> to, you know that would help us a lot. Yeah, text jet to seventeen seventy six, and then you don't have to pay taxes this year. <laughs> If Dude, you find that's it, what I'm so mad at. You, you lose it. an eighty million dollar jet, but you're still mad at me. <laughs> like if I like if I just mess up my t- if I claim, yeah, yeah. No, it looks like you claimed this Chick Fil A meal. Were you really on the road? Hey, I don't know. I where don't know. where was that Where's jet, jet going? Tell me where the jet is. Find the jet. They did find the jet. Um, yeah, but you know what it was? <laughs> what saxophone? Saxophone took it down. <laughs> You could do that actually. You can go in your backyard and <laughs> yeah, just go. You, you could take out whole airliners, dude. <laughs> that's why. That's they make why you they put won't let you. I was gonna say mode. they won't let you get on. They won't let you get on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. They make you put it on airplane mode because they don't know what's in your Spotify playlist. Mm-hmm. There's those tones, man. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so uh, so he's still trying to invent stuff, still trying to make instruments, um, but then uh, his lip starts to swell, uh, his lower lip. And long story short, it's a tumor. He has cancer in his lip. Yeah, in his lip, and it ends up growing to a very large, like pomegranate sized tumor. Oh like my god! Very, very large tumor, making it really difficult for him to live and play 
wind instruments. Yeah. Um, and that's he, a thing that can happen. You yeah. can get lip cancer, I guess. Um, yeah, you get it a lot if you like chew tobacco. That's a really common like, tobacco chewers. Get oh, I thought that was cancer. gums. I thought that was gum can't. Like, I mean, they get both. Uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, but, a lot of people get that little dot on their lip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, they, um, he, after like five years of kind of suffering with it, he had the opportunity to get treatment, and so he could either have it surgically removed, or there was this hot new doctor that. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it's just a weird way to say that. It was a hot new doctor. <laughs> it was a hot new doctor. He had a radio station on the Goat border claims, of Texaco. Baby. <laughs> Texaco. <laughs> Texaco. <laughs> um, no, there was this doctor out of India who had this like herbal medicine and uh, he was like, you want to try it? And so he was like, yeah, I'll try it. So he tried it and it killed him. I, it, <laughs> and he died. No, it cured him. It cured the cancer. Uh, and so I don't yeah, know. Hey, the government doesn't want you to know that, though. So <laughs> they don't want you. To, yeah. And so he drank this tea for six months, and it slowly started to go down until eventually he didn't have it anymore. And so not even cancer could kill this guy. Um, and so he survives that. And then he goes on to invent his best invention yet. Um, it wasn't the saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he then went on to invent. I wish there was an image of this. It never made it to production, um, but he's talked about it. Uh, so I don't know how far along in the invention process he was with this. Okay, but we know he invented what he called the Saxa cannon, which was what it sounds an like an actual cannon that he said will be able to demolish a whole city by firing a 10 meter wide round. <laughs> Weighing 550 tons. I don't know if it would ever work. Okay, so. <laughs> and it looked like this. That's what I was wondering. You gotta draw. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 13 trumpet thing. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that he wanted mass destruction? Yeah, that's that was his that was his idea from the beginning. He, he would have loved the 1900s. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, when, did, guy, when did he die? Uh, he died in he died of old age. Believe it or not, that's crazy. In 1894, he was 70, 79 oh, years old. Oh man, he almost made it. He almost. If he has made it, it to the, he would have loved the 1900s, dude. Yeah, he would. All the been, stuff that they destroyed. He would have been on the Manhattan Project. Oh, for sure. They're like, hey, I don't know what we could use you for, but we could. Let use me get you. my lips on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, could you moisten up this bolt for this nuke? <laughs> <laughs> we only know how to make nukes because of the saliva of Adolf Sachs. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's where the saxophone came from. It was an instrument that was primarily used in combat uh, in its early days. Orchestras picked it up too, but primarily used in combat. Um, and the uh, Hard and fast musicians. What did they do? That? What, like what do you like? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, it's just it, whatever. Do that again. Okay, do it one more time. No, not that. <laughs> that one. Yeah. Now do it. Do it again, but kind of elongate the like, notes just a like little bit. Sexy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do it. Do it, but hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Do it hotter, is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> Charge. <laughs> It's the charge. <laughs> I know what it was. I'm a comedian. Oh my gosh. Oh my. <laughs> it's wow. the punchline that got me good. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's how jokes work. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so, yeah, many years, many moons later, um, 
uh, jazz musicians found the saxophone and sure. it kind of became a legendary instrument after that. Uh, it, the, the saxophone is like the electric guitar of wind instruments. There's not a cool, <laughs> pretty stinking cool. Wind that is one of my biggest regrets. I mean, I got good scholarships because I did low brass, mm -hmm. but I wish that I had done saxophone. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool because it's just cool. You can pick it up. Yeah, you know, I I think that, but then uh, I remember a couple of years ago there was another comedian in Kansas City mm -hmm. who was picking up the saxophone, and yeah. it was it was weird. <laughs> you know, like it's weird when someone our age is like, yeah, I'm picking up the saxophone. You're like, hey, Why? no, that's that sounds like you're trying to make friends with a sixth grader. No. Yeah. No. It's a little weird. It's it's not it's not bad to have new hobbies. Yeah, get a get a cool one like like trains, like train sets. Oh, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. It's not it. There's nothing. You know, I'm learning that primarily for war. <laughs> That's why I'm learning Chinese. <laughs> yeah, Duolingo. <laughs> See, that's like that's what I'm saying. Is like it's like an adult could spend their time doing something different. Yeah, you know. I don't think so. I, I think learn Spanish acceptable. or. But I will say, I will say, like, no, no, no. I'm saying, like, if you're learning an instrument, the first like year is you going, ba 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 ba. You know, yeah, like it's very hard to it's watch. A little. It's hard to watch. Yeah, it's painful. Yeah, yeah that's true. And well, you got a spouse and <laughs> spouse spouse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he died uh, and uh, a legend has it that after he went to the grave, they buried him with all of his horns. Yeah, and his son played a symphony. Yeah, in New York and he and his wife symphony. raised from their raised graves. From graves, but and as they came in to reunite for one last time, from after the grave, the from underneath Devil the orchestra pit, this this actual pit to the depths of hell opened up, and kids yeah. started falling into it. This, people were screaming. There's fire and blood and everywhere. Like, this is the war I prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, All I've always along, known this I was thought coming. it was earthly war. It was a spiritual war. spiritual battle. Yeah, and the I got a saxophone off. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this episode. If you liked it, here's another one you can check out. And then down here is a bunch of other episodes you can watch. So make sure you click on that to watch forever. Uh, and then you can subscribe if you haven't done that already. It makes sure you don't miss an episode. Uh, like this video, leave a comment, leave a review wherever you're watching, uh, and then subscribe or follow on whatever social media platform you prefer. Uh, we will be there. <laughs>